Persepolis was the ceremonial capital of the Achaemenid Empire, located 60 kilometers from Shiraz. The name Persepolis is derived from the Greek meaning the Persian city, and it was founded by Darius I in 518 BC. It was built on an immense half artificial, half natural terrace, where the King of Kings created an impressive palace complex inspired by Mesopotamian models. The city's remote location kept it a secret from the outside world, and it became the safest city in the Persian Empire, for storing art, artifacts, archives, and keeping the royal treasury. The great palace complex had an entrance through the Gate of All Nations, flanked by two monumental statues of bull men who were thought to ward of evil. The entire monument had a chain construction with the two large doors and a hole between them. The columns of the central halls were 17 meters high. The guardian spirits of human-headed bulls are first known from the palaces from Assyria which became the part of the Persian Empire in 550 BC. That is the great rule the empire at its territorial peak, when it included much of Western Asia, parts of the Balkans and the Caucasus, most of the Black Sea's coastal regions, Central Asia, the Indus Valley in the Far East, and portions of North Africa, including Egypt, Eastern Libya and coastal Sudan. Darius commissioned the construction of Persepolis in 515 BCE. The complex consisted of nine opulent architectural buildings and palaces, which served as the ceremonial capital of the ancient Persian Empire. The first three buildings are believed to have been completed before his death, and the fourth one, the treasury, was started by completed by his son Xerxes. The buildings were constructed with mud bricks and massive precision-cut stone blocks assembled without mortar. The surfaces of the great limestone blocks were polished to a shiny, marble-like appearance. Broad range of luxury expensive materials were imported from every known country in the ancient world, including Lebanese cedar wood, purple dye, expensive metals, Egyptian cotton and Indian gold. The Apadana, a massive 60 meters long hypostyle audience hall, boasts in a roof of a cedar beams, supported by 72 columns, 19 meters above the terrace level. Resting on each of the columns were animals, such as the lion and bull sculptures, representing the king's authority. The Tachara, or Darius the Great Palace, was more ceremonial than residential. A cuneiform inscription at the entrance of Darius' palace says, Darius the great king, king of kings, king of countries, son of Hystaspes Achaemenian, built this palace. Dignitaries with their servants from the various states of the Persian Empire would bring gifts and pay tribute to the king in this grand area. These gifts include silver and gold vessels and vases, weapons, woven fabric, jewelry and animals from the delegates' own countries. Darius lived long enough to watch some of his plans being executed. His ambitious ideas were taken over by his son Xerxes, the designated successor by Darius. Xerxes consolidated his power by crushing revolts in Egypt and Babylon. He renewed his father's campaign to subjugate Greece and punish Athens with its allies for their interference in the Ionian revolt. His forces gained control of Midland Greece North until they defeated the Battle of Salamis. Fearing that the Greeks might trap him in Europe, Xerxes retreated with a greater part of his army back to Asia, leaving behind Mardonius to continue his campaign. Mardonius was defeated the following year, effectively ending the Persian invasion. After returning to Persia, Xerxes dedicated himself to large-scale construction projects, many of which were left unfinished by his father. Xerxes was infamous for his womanizing, cruel tactics and excessive spending. He insisted that his palace be double the size of his father's. An unshaped harem with three decorated doorways and a fourth secret door connecting directly to the palace was built to accommodate 22 apartments. 
The treasury was located behind the harem and served as an armory and storage area for valuable items and written records. The freshwater supply, sewage system and groundwater drainage systems were well planned and executed engineering marvels. The engineers made use of several techniques to ensure adequate yet safe supplies and runoff systems for flood water from the melting snow and precipitation. There is an interesting museum located in the main building of Zoxis Harem. It's one of the country's oldest structures dedicated to house a museum. It consists of a large central hall and two smaller rooms and exhibits objects from the prehistoric Achaemenian and Islamic periods are collected in three different sections. The museum contains a stone foundation tablet and a range of artifacts discovered during excavations. Alabaster vessels, eye-colored beads, clay tablets, parts of ancient statues and fire pots. One of the highlights of the museum is a winged figure of Cyrus the Great, representing a king of fortune and called by Iranians as the father of Persia. In Iran there are six Achaemenid royal tombs left, four of them located at Necropolis on Aksherustam and two at Persepolis above the treasury. It's a burial place of two Achaemenid kings, Artaxerxes II and Artaxerxes III. It is not possible to enter the tomb. Inside there are several stone caskets, all of which had been broken and looted over the centuries. About five kilometers from Persepolis lies the imposing site of Nakshirustam, where Darius the Great and his successors had their monumental tombs carved into the cliff. According to the religious beliefs of ancient Iranians, water, fire and soil were the three sacred elements created by Hura Mazda, so it was not permissible to pollute them with the filth. When the soul departs, the body cools down and the devil roots into the corpse. It was not allowed to burn the dead or throw the body in the water or bury it in the ground. The only way was to put it in the stone casket inside the tomb deep into the cliff. Thus there would be no water, no fire and the body doesn't touch the soil. Although Nakshirustam had long been a sacred area, Darius the Great was the first to choose it as a burial place. His successors not only imitated his idea of a cliff tomb, but also copied the layout of the tomb itself. The interest to each tomb is at the center of each cross, which opens onto a small chamber where the king lay in a sarcophagus. As history has taught us, no empire lasts forever. In 330 BC, Alexander the Great conquered the Achaemenid Persian Empire and after looting its treasures, burned Persepolis to the ground.